Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amadati Yoko Fishala. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are doing amazing. We are here today again for another Bible study and um, I'm so grateful that I get the opportunity to do this every single day. Um, it's really a blessing that I do have the time um, in my schedule to actually get it done. Um, today has been like a very busy day, but if I continue just talking, just talking, you know, how are you guys doing? How did your day go? And I'm sure you're thinking about it in your head. Hmm, what did I do? This and that and that. Like, what did you eat are you good okay um i just want to say that you're special and um i love you um so yeah like today's just been like really really busy for me um yeah work into the gym and then like went to life group after it's like a a community of you know women of god that gather together to encourage each other talk about you know the sermon for last week you know just to grow in the lord and um it's a beautiful experience to be able to you know have that community you know it's it's really a blessing and i'm so grateful and now i'm here with you guys you know so we can talk about the word of the lord that we've been doing since and it's been growing us you know what i mean um this season like it's just been amazing you know it's just been a season of stretching for you know the people of the lord and th this season is like stretching like no other and um the lord is wanting to save like his people you know the specific people that the lord wants to save in this season um and um the lord is doing his work and are you allowing the lord to use you in this season you know before we get into anything at all like Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for you are amazing. Thank you, Father, for your God and the potent El Shaddai, King of Kings, the Most High Father. I just glorify your name, O oh God, for what you're doing in this ministry. Thank you, Father, for bringing us here to glean from your word and to seek after you, O oh God. Abba, we worship you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. We know that your word of the, your word never fails your word is alive and it's living and we just thank you father for the work that your word is doing in our lives oh lord that we do not just come here to just sit down and listen to god speak that we are here to to grow ourselves we're here to be inspired by your word and not just to get the inspiration alone but to do your word oh lord and father we just humble ourselves today oh god we allow you to 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 minister unto us through the help of the holy spirit i surrender myself unto you oh god holy spirit teach through me oh lord in jesus name i invite the holy spirit into this bible study take absolute control and i block every distractions from my end and from the audience's end in jesus mighty name amen um so it is getting towards the halloween season you can obviously can already tell that there will be a lot of spiritual warfare going on it's already been happening like in my apartment and like there's literally smell of cigarette the upstairs neighbor would smoke cigarette in, a, in their apartment. I don't know if it's a he or she, um, but it's literally would, it would enter into my apartment. And today, you know, it's just been like crazy, like never before. But like, you know what? Like, you can obviously tell that there's something that the enemy is trying to do. But like, you know what? The enemy cannot take my joy. You know what I mean? Like, open the window and everything, and the smell went out. But again, it's a continual thing. Um, so you know, the Lord is working, and. Um, we thank the Lord. Okay, let's just focus on what the Lord is doing. Um, also, second thing is that, you know, it's Halloween season. You can imagine that there's going to be, again, spiritual attacks, okay? Um, which is going to be an I let right now. The demonic are recruiting right now. This is a yearly annual thing that you need to be aware about, okay? Um, recruiting for lesbianism okay homosexuality recruiting for you know talk about the the atrocities of this world recruiting for different names okay um so you need to be aware okay and um be on guard and also like don't be just i don't know i just feel like don't be too like you can be open but don't be too open to like just anything and just let anything enter into your um, your field or your space or whatever you would have to, you would want to call it be on guard you know and um, I would say one of the discussion that we actually had in um, the meeting that we had today um, regarding love and you know loving and I did mention that you know the Lord wants us to be open in this season to love people like beyond like our capacity and to really enlarge ourselves stretch ourselves to love and to be trodden down and to experience that pain which is really what we talked about yesterday as well that love really is uh, let's see we talked about love okay now it doesn't recognize my face <laughs> It said that love, to love 
and be peaceful is to suffer graciously we had that conversation yeah and i'm like and i was literally sharing that you know um we our lives as christians are oftentimes uninteresting because we're not really pressing on in our purpose um because i, I gave an example like you know people are valuable people are special every one of them and the devil unfortunately uses people and steals their value and uses their value for the demonic things the things that are in rebellion to the lord you know and but in general people are you know special people you know and um you know one of the reasons why our lives are oftentimes you know uninteresting is because we're not digging deep in the lives of people to bring about you know salvation in their lives like you know bringing salvation to a group of people you know it goes beyond evangelism it goes beyond like you know just standing on the corner of the street and passing out tracts it goes into like you know discipleship it goes into mentorship it goes into like you know calling them and checking up on them and hearing feedback and active listening and giving advice giving counseling providing help it goes beyond it goes beyond you know just the regular face value um, meetings that we usually have and say god loves you and like you know you have to give your life to christ it, it, it there needs to be a presence of light in your lives and that could be you you know our lives as christian is not supposed to be like um very plat you know um it's supposed to be very it's supposed to be bubbling you know <laughs> um and um yeah that that's one of the things that i actually prayed for about openness and the devil like obviously you can obviously tell that i mean that was the, that was what i actually asked them to pray for me about okay like being open right and i think the devil was listening because tell me why some random man you know on the streets was literally calling misses never happened in montreal quebec Quebec quebecers are very very like you know very interesting people and they don't really just talk to you you know especially like if you're an immigrant and they don't just like talk to you it's really like a white quebecer you know um yeah like and it's like missus missus like i don't know you like it's like 9 p.m sir you know i quickly just like walked past because like i don't know what this is happening right now and come out of, i come out of the subway i see like you know um special uh, policeman car you know whatever so i like outside of the subway and i'm like this is pretty interesting um yeah obviously like it's pretty interesting like i'm just saying like just a lot of things like the enemy trying to condemn people bring guilt and all of those things like no you're not gonna do that and then you're not gonna like yeah no space for you sir <laughs> not even sir boy no space for you devil do you know what i mean like there's no space for that um um, I'm saying this because, like, we often think that, okay, like, God says to, like, you know, love your enemy and things like that. But we need to understand that we're at war. Um, there was a parable, parable um, in the Bible about Jesus. Um, a lady came to Jesus Christ to heal her daughter. And Jesus Christ said that, why would I, you know, give what belongs to, um, basically, the children of the Lord to dogs? You know what I mean? Like, why should he do that? You know what I mean? Um, it, in the sense, like, we need to be discerning to operate, you know, in the spirit and to operate from a place of love because, you know, the enemy does set trap for the people of the Lord. And yeah, like, you know, the Lord will bring you out of every circumstances or situation that you find yourself in. But it does not mean that you should not be discerning. You need to be discerning as a child of the Lord. The Lord he cares about your safety do you know what i mean like he cares about your safety so you need to be discerning in such a situation first of all 9 p.m big red flag all of those things like no like the circumstances don't it doesn't initiate such interaction you know what i mean you need to think and, and let the spirit of the lord lead you into a situation you know what i mean um again like i've watched the movie about a girl like literally went into the brothel you know place where prostitutes gather together and like you know yeah where things happen you know and she goes there and goes to evangelize to them the only reason why she was able to do that in the movie was because she was a former prostitute herself she was involved in a dark world herself okay if do you have the experience to dabble in such things like i'm a woman you know what i mean i cannot be talking to somebody at 9 p.m i don't know you sir i i don't know you you know like i don't know you like she had the experience to do that you know like she knew the ins and outs of like the brothel and everything so she was able to actually like survive and function very well there although like it was a, it was pretty much like a, a very complicated situation like it was very interesting like how she managed to ex to escape 
okay so we need to be discerning you know um your time has not come if the t- if your time has come <laughs> the lord will tell you um and i guess like it would just happen but i don't know like you know what i mean like let's why are we talking about death here fam you know what i mean like <laughs> hold up hold up hold up anyway it's like yes this conversation is actually quite interesting like we talked about the transformation of judah like judah has been transformed expressed in love you know to the people of of the lord you know to the people of the lord um there was one time actually like funny story like the lord told me like i used to like on the streets like i'll give money out to the street and i'll like be giving money to you know just give money if someone begging i'll give you like you know five dollars and like you know i'll give you money you know and the lord actually convicted me of that he said that you know basically why are you giving money to people that are not even in my kingdom like you're supposed to be giving money investing in the kingdom of the lord and i needed to change my my mindset my perspective like it is about the kingdom of god okay if someone out there has made the decision that they don't want to be in the kingdom of the lord they don't want to be they don't have they don't want to have anything to do with it with god let them suffer the consequences thereof let them be trodden let them be leave them to be like the prodigals like you know eating amongst the pigs let them suffer their fate you know in love of course the love the lord looks after them you know let them leave them to their fate okay and you invest in the kingdom of the lord once it's time they'll come back okay and i know the story maybe like it makes you feel like as if you're fitting with the brother of the prodigal son or the prodigal like yeah the prodigal um that was walking walking in his father's uh you know um house and the boy comes and is is now having to share his inheritance with his brother his own inheritance because his brother already took his own inheritance and squandered it right it's like you know that's what love is like you share and everything like but in the kingdom of the lord we thank god that there is abundance you know but that's not even what we're talking about is it we're talking about you know <laughs> we're talking about again <laughs> oh we're talking about the people okay we're talking about the people that are rebellious that want to eat out of the father's table you cannot go and eat in the table of the devil whatever the devil feeds you is what you eat whatever the devil feeds you is what you eat are you listening to me on the father's table surrounding it are his children are the people that are loyal to him not dogs are you here can you hear so you need to have that mentality you know you are an investment of god you know like you you belong to god so whatever that comes out of you whatever that comes out of you like you need to know exactly discerning it well how to distribute it okay um and i want you to value yourself i want you to have self-worth while doing the father's business just because we're saying love 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 does not mean you need to be discerning when to pause when to stop when to do this because the enemy can use your nature your very own nature whether it's good loving it can use it against you so you need to be aware and fight like a soldier spiritual warfare in the season it's getting towards the halloween season it's pretty, it's gonna be pretty crazy there are a lot of people out there that are putting masks on their face and they're in the in the christian community now you're gonna begin to see like crazy things happening um but yeah we have to love them you know love them anyways and um, the way that we can love them is by praying for them praying for their salvation whilst we be on god all right okay so like yeah like judah judah is like a tree is like really like you know exp- expressing true love to you know expressing true love in the story um tells um joseph that hey like you know you can have me as the servant and let benjamin go back to my father because i don't want him to die you know um in his old age in sadness you know in grief and mourning you know i like he took his vow to his chest and said that i told my father that if anything that was to happen to benjamin that i would be the one to carry it i would be the one to bear the consequences and that was what he did he lived to 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 actually like he actually carried out the the vow that he made like he he kept his word you know he kept his word like judah to me like is a man of great integrity 
it, it's very rare like it's, it's a matter of great integrity whatever judah says is what judah is gonna do that's who judah is judah is the one that's able to be like um you tell judah that oh, judah you did this and this is like oh yeah i actually did i'm sorry you know well i don't know if he said he's sorry in that story but he just basically ac was accountable for what he did so guys that's basically like that conversation i don't know what we're gonna like let's see what we're gonna unwrap in genesis chapter 45 didn't really have time to um, really go through it um but you know let the holy spirit just lead and we're just gonna dive into it then joseph could not reframe himself before all of them that stood by him and he cried causing every man to go out from me i'm sorry cause every man cause every man to go out from him because it was crying it was emotional that again men you know they're very buff and especially like joseph yeah we talked about how joseph's personality like is very pretty rough you know been in the prison probably has some like you know and that it let it out to him like whatever that means like some you know mm, i don't know like I, like I, I don't know there's i don't know the vocabulary is not coming you know like he has some yeah edge is what you say he has some edge to him you know um scuffy beards you know um and it says and there stood no man with him while joseph made himself known unto his brethren so he told the egyptians that depart from me you know and his brethren were him and then he began to take off the mask interesting <laughs> interesting now we've talked about that before well he started to take off his mask now and it's like it's, he wept aloud in verse 2 and the egyptians and the house of pharaoh heard they heard it and joseph said unto his brethren i am joseph doth my father yet leave and his brethren could not answer him for they were troubled at his presence like is my father still alive was the question i asked and um they, it, like they were like what like do you know what i mean like just shocked like you mean joseph is still alive like are you serious right now do you know what i mean and it says and joseph said unto his brethren come near to me i pray you and they came near and he said i am joseph your brother whom ye sold into egypt so now he's telling them like literally what's happening right and it says now therefore be not grieved not angry with yourselves that ye sold me either for god this did send me before you to preserve life hey joseph's story is literally like the it's literally like the 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 picture of what you know our lives literally look like you know the lord saw you he chose you and um, being the, the child or the daughter the son of of love and of light you know and he made you pass through the fire and through water okay that you may be able to to fulfill god's will which is to preserve life okay it says for these two years at the famine being in the land and yet there are five years in which there shall never and neither be hearing nor harvest and god sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your life by a great deliverance so now it is not you that sent me either but god and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. So you can see how like, you know, um, Joseph has healed, you know, from someone that actually kept his brothers in, in prison um, to the person that actually like, you know, it's kind of like wanting to, you know, um, almost um, avenge for what they did to him now. It feels like as if he has understanding and is like healed in that short amount of time. Like it's so crazy how healing can actually happen. Um, and now it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty healed. Like it's over it. I mean, he just was like, you know what? It's not even you. Like, and I think that, you know, I mean, personally for me, like this morning was really, really hard for me because um, I was just thinking about like, you know, my circumstances um yeah and and i was just like wow like i was talking to the lord like just lamenting really like just literally literally lamenting to the lord and and i think that we oftentimes forget that what the lord is doing like is doing it for a reason like he's doing it for a reason you know <sighs> 
Is it someone hurting you? Is it that you lost something? Is it that you experienced a loss or whether it's whatever type of loss you've experienced in your life, you know, a loss of a child, whether it's loss of money, whether it's loss of property, everything is for a reason. Like the Lord fashioned everything to work out for a reason. And I feel like the ultimate question now is that, do you care about God's reason? Like people say that they do care about God's will. Oh, let your will be done, please God. But if God tells you that my will is that X, Y, and Z should happen so that it can result in this in your life, will you be okay with it? Like God is the one that understands why certain things should happen. It's the one that understands why his only begotten son had to die for us. We don't really get it. Spiritually, we don't really get it. You know, we can say that we get it, but we don't really get it. You know, so in that space of ignorance, you know, like we need to rely on the Lord. We need to trust the Lord. And know that the Lord will fill our cup. The Lord will heal us from whatever losses that we have experienced. Because whatever we've given to the Lord, whatever losses that you've experienced, there are sacrifices unto the Lord. But again, you know, um, the devil also wants to steal from you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, the devil wants to steal from you. Um, it's interesting, like, differentiating between God's required sacrifices and the enemy literally wanting to steal from you, right? Um, but Joseph basically here argues that it doesn't really matter. Like, it doesn't really, ma really matter, like, because we can see that it's the his brothers were acting based on their flesh. And, you know, the whatever that comes with the flesh is death, you know? And death is literally, like, it is correlated with the, the enemy, the devil, you know what I mean? Death and hell, the dragon, you know, the false prophets, they're all categorized in the same box. Okay. And so Joseph is like, it doesn't really matter. Like what, you know, or, or it doesn't matter what you do. You know, all that matters is that the Lord fashioned everything so that you guys, we will have life. Okay. Like, it doesn't matter whether it was the enemy or whether it was, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that the Lord used those circumstances. The Lord used them, fashioned them. And you say, you say fashion, we, I didn't say the Lord caused it. The Lord fashioned it to work out for their good. And again, you can ask the question, did the Lord purposefully put that stumbling block in their path? Um, like, was it just one plan that the Lord had that, will result in Joseph becoming, you know, the ruler in Egypt, you know, did that, the, the story have to be that his brother would do that to him and so on and so forth. I believe that there are many different possibilities to actually arriving at a destination. And I believe that we have free will. I believe that, you know, one can in rebellion, you know, reroute themselves you know, and reroute their destinies and end up at a wrong destination if they don't really surrender to the Lord. Um, the only We know that there are two ways. There is the narrow way and there is the broad way. You know, a lot of people are going on the broad way because it's easy, you know. Their ego is being, is being stroked in the broad way, you know, and so they'll end up at a wrong destination. But the narrow way is hard. The narrow way is full of oppression and, and evil and suffering. And so even though the enemy thinks that, you know, they're doing evil to you, you know that in, your, in the narrow way, that is supposed to happen. You know, you know exactly what's going to happen in the narrow way. And so when the suffering does come, you know that it is the manifestation of God's word. And that brings you such great joy. But again, it takes spiritual maturity to actually get there. It's not something that we can overnight just wake up one day and say that, ha, huh, I'm so, I'm suffering. Oh my God. Like I'm, I'm, I'm so, oh yeah. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Like we don't, we don't practically like rejoice in our suffering which is something that the bible the word of the lord says to do it says rejoice in your suffering like you know rejoice in it you know sometimes like you know this morning feeling all type of way you know i could get up and, and just dance even worshiping the lord was literally like pretty difficult because i was listening to worship music and i'm like mm, like it was pretty difficult because like why am i feeling this way you know and i'm like I, you could i could literally get off this if i wanted to but you know 
so like the submission is beyond you know <laughs> down on my knees to my father a hey, submission to my daddy why am i like this <laughs> why am i like this anyways like there's no other way except for god's way god's way is perfect it might be hard but it's worth it it's literally very worth it you know and so it's like joseph argues that everything is working together for is good that even though his brothers were walking in the broad way and he was walking in the narrow way and whatever they did you know as per working in the in the broad way they will you know be do wicked things they will like they will you know commit atrocities and lie and, and all the things they would do you know like judah for example sleeping with his daughter and all that is an example of someone walking in the broadway and i think you know something that's really significant is that even though somebody is walking in the broadway and somebody is walking in the narrow way spiritually when they do you know coincide in the physical there is a flat there's a clash you know there is a clash the person that is working in a narrow way will tend to experience suffering from that person that is that's in that is working in the broader way um and you know i can't per se tell you exactly like the concept the benefits of someone that is working on the broadway clashing with someone that is uh, working in the narrow way um i can say that because I've not personally tried to persecute someone that is like working in the broader way. Cause like what the like why would you do that? You know what I mean? I don't know. Like I'm trying to think in my head that have you done that before? Even when I was in the world, I don't necessarily I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe the maybe the Holy Spirit will bring it to my mind. Have I done it before? Think oh eh. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe made a couple of comments that I don't remember right now. Um, but I can from my own experience, like I can, you know, kind of think in my head, like, hmm, like if someone, you see someone that is working righteously, and the Bible also talks about it, that, you know, the righteous actually experience much persecution, much oppression um, by the wicked, you know, like they, they, they derive, you know, things from them like they want to steal from them they want to you know they want to switch off their lights and dim them they want to they, they derive something from it there has to be some type of like benefit from this you know um because that's what the broadway is about it's about like pleasure but like, not it's not a lasting like, uh, pleasure you know it's just a feeling that's literally like fabricated by the enemy that is not even real okay they will burn in the lake of fire for all of eternity eternity is like infinity time where time days and, and months does not exist eternity okay um and it says what of the lord says that whatever you do do it well if you're going to oppress somebody make sure you oppress that person very very well and make that person perfect even more perfect in the lord because what you're doing is that you're causing about refinement refining for that person you're actually you know doing the lord's work because guess what guess who owns the entire word it's 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 god god is sovereign it says everything that you do the rich the wicked the righteous you're doing it all to the glory of the lord and so whatever you do <laughs> whatever you do whether you are oppressing the wicked i'm um, sorry the righteous sorry you're actually refining them to become more like jesus christ and so you're actually you yourself that you think that you're in rebellion to the lord you are actually fulfilling the will of the lord on this earth is that isn't that doesn't that boss your head? But the, the only difference is that they have decided not to obey the, com the commandment of the Lord, you know, when they had the choice. You know, like, you didn't obey it. You literally, like, chose to do what you want. The Lord has asked you to walk in a narrow way, but you chose to walk the broad way. But whether you choose broad or narrow, you're still going to bring glory to the Lord anyways. But the fact is that you did what you did. You know, the Lord is not one to play with, is not one to disobey, is not one to, and yes, is not one to disobey. People will need to learn, and they will learn to fear the Lord. They, in fact, will learn. <laughs> they, in fact, will learn. Okay. Um, 
I think it's pretty funny like people actually understand spiritual things, spiritual principles, astrology or whatever you want to call it, but they still argue that there's only there's a universe. What what do you mean universe, my guy? What do you mean universe? Are you trying to say God? <laughs> the sovereign God? Okay. All right. Anyways, let's just continue in the word. Like God has laws that we human beings must uh, must abide to god gave his only begotten son to die for us for our sins because we were to perish for all of eternity we were to drink out of the cup of the wrath of the lord but god gave his only begotten son who is god right now god gave him authorization or the authority to be lord over us to basically like be a leader over us the people of the earth and that is jesus christ and that is why there's nothing that can replace jesus christ not even allah not even um or oh, muhammad not muhammad not even um what else you want to call it oh yeah the, the indian gods not no devils can replace jesus christ because the god only gave one man who is a god right god gave jesus christ one person he gave one the son his only begotten son the authority over humans and everything that he ever created he gave him made him as equal as he is okay and he gave him the authority to rule over everything and that is jesus christ that is not allah that's not buddha that's not whatever devils you're worshiping that is jesus christ there's no other way except for jesus christ there was only one authority given to one man and that is jesus christ anyways um that is that conversation jesus christ is real it does exist you can encounter him you can meet with him you know but you have to seek him diligently all right um the same way people go ahead and seek for buddha and like all the things all the devils they, they cut themselves to, to satisfy or please devils <laughs> god is not asking jesus christ is not asking for that he's asking that you will give your life to christ believe that it does exist and receive salvation and watch your life turn around for the good Jesus Christ is not one that wants your destruction. It's not one that wants you to perish in your darkness, in your addiction, in your, in your drinking, in your perversiveness and, and uncleanliness and, and just your evil. Um, to live a life without no future. Jesus Christ is wanting to give you a life, a future. That, what, that you can, you, when you look at your life now, you're going to literally be upset <laughs> literally vexed in your spirits like so this is what the devil stole from me he stole years of my life that's what you're gonna see when you look back to how the lord has literally transformed you and restored you in the place of his glory jesus christ is calling today he's calling today he's calling you home there's only one way except for jesus it's calling all right so we're going to continue that conversation yeah and if you want to give your life to christ there's only one thing you can just say this just say you believe in him confess your sins to jesus christ tell him everything that you've done and tell him that you believe in him and you know that you're a sinner in need of a savior and you want him to be in your life to be your personal lord and your savior and you renounce everything that you've ever done renounce the devils you've worshipped renounce renounce and denounce them didn't renounce them every covenant that you have every demonic covenant soul ties demonic soul ties that you've had with devils denounce them no matter how deep you, you you've been no matter how deep you are you can get out it's not going to be easy but you can get out i did you can get out it's not going to be easy again but you can get out. Whether it's witchcraft, whether it is ast astrology, whether you are worshipping devils, cutting yourself or giving sacrifices to devils or demons, you can get out of it. Those are oppressing spirits. All right. So, and Joseph said unto them, he says, come, I pray thee. And they came near and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, okay, whom ye sold into Egypt. Remember the broad way and the narrow way, the clashing, the friction. And it says, now, therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves. That ye sold me either 
For God did send me before you to preserve life. So where Joseph was actually going, heading to, was a place of restoration. It was a place of preservation. Even for them that are guilty. That's the character of the Lord. The people of the world understand the Lord to be this mighty God like that is very demanding, very, that just commands, you know, and, and doesn't really care, um, just, you know, causes about war and everything. It is your sins that are causing about the afflictions of this world. There are certain things that you will never understand, that only God can understand. And God created this world with laws and principles that we must abide in. And if we don't obey that law, if we don't obey the law of the Lord, what do you expect is going to happen? There's going to be consequences. And there we go again. We, yeah, we, we see the Lord again coming into the picture, wanting to solve man's problem. The Bible said that he gave his only begotten son again to die for you. And man keeps committing sins, breaking principles and principles upon principles. Why? Why? Of the flesh, and they're expecting that they would not suffer any consequences given the fact that they still have not even accepted salvation, they don't want salvation. But you expect that there would not be consequences. How do you expect that life is gonna actually? How do you expect? How do you want that? Like, do you like do you understand that what you're actually expecting doesn't exactly exist? No, it doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Like, a life when people were just like in chaos doing whatever they want is just. Nah, that is not a life that the Lord that that type of life the Lord did not create that type of life does not exist that type of life without wherever you you've built that life with that ecosystem in this earth will be demolished okay and there we, we know that there are many different places even the strip club I'm pretty sure they do have laws and regulations okay um Yes, because you can't, you can't just walk in the strip club and just go and, you know, have your way with somebody that's like, you know, doing something, dancing on the stage or something, you know. You can't just do that. So there are laws and regulations, you know. So maybe in those dark corner places, they probably want, they, they create an ecosystem for themselves where like they don't have any rules, no laws, nothing. And people enter into it and they're caught in the trap of the devil. And they say that they're, they're experiencing freedom. That's, that's the ultimate thing that the, the sinner, the, the unbeliever, like someone that is literally like in that rebellious mind, like a witch, you know, a witch who think like that, you know, um, even practicing witchcraft, like you are still operating in some set of rules. Okay. So in the mind, it does not make any sense to understand. It doesn't make no sense at all. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, let's just continue. Um, yeah, so where were we? So it's, it tells them that, you know, I've come here to break, to preserve life. You know, this is why I'm in this journey. Um, it says, um, for these two years at the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be hearing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by, to do what? To do what? To save lives. Mm. To preserve you a pros posterity. Okay? A posterity. What? In this earth. Let's check what that means. A posterity means to, to save all future generations of people. Hmm. That is so good. A descendant of a person. Hmm, so good, so good, so good, so good. So it's there to save lives, to save the next generation. That's what many of us are literally engaged in, uh, spiritual warfare. By a great deliverance, to, to carry out a great breakthrough is not easy. <laughs> to experience a great breakthrough is not easy. You are, you are, there's a rub off of different entities, rub off of different, you know, entities that literally, you know, want to get in the way, want to take something from you. There's a rub off from different entity, personality, people that are walking in the Broadway. Okay. 
There's a rub off. And it says, now it was not you that sent me thither. It wasn't you. You thought that it was you that was orchestrating the whole thing. You wish. <laughs> you know, the, the devil is such a delusional entity. And the people of the world, they think that they are the ones controlling things. How dare you? We talked about yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? How what we think that we're doing in our lives that is like literally you eating milestones or literally nothing because the one who controls your life is God. Hmm. It's God. He said, it is no you that sent me where I went. You only participated. <laughs> Even though it is a negative participation, you participated to bring about the will of the Lord to come into fruition. Now, I want you to look around you and I want you to spiritually discern the things around you in your internal and in your external environment. What are the frictions you are experiencing? What are the frictions? What, what frictions are you experiencing? And how do you identify God in them? What are the frictions that you are experiencing and how do you identify God in them? Do you understand the final goal? Do you understand the outcome? Are you able to walk with God and connect with the Lord through the process? And this, this is literally what I will be working on. How to connect with the Lord through the process so that I can better discern so that I can better live a good life and for my own spiritual maturity as well. So in the threshing moment, so in the time where there is suffering, in the times where you know someone is afflicting you, the Bible says that everything happens. All together, all things happen. For the good of the Lord, for his will to be fulfilled. Everything. You mean everything. Like everything that, that everything that happens is all supposed to add up to some outcome that the Lord actually desires. And so do you see why this is worth it? And that's why I asked you that question. Like, do you really desire this, the, the Lord's will? Is that really your desire? Is that really your desire though? Is that really what you want? Or your desires. Is it your desires you want? Or do you want God's desires? Pick one. Because you have to pick one. But have you, have you come to a place where God's desire is your desires? That takes relationship with the Lord. And not just any type of relationship, but an intimate relationship. Getting the Lord to open up to you. But it is through suffering. It is through breaking. Like It is through like... When the Lord uses you, the Bible talks about how the Lord used Moses. Like when the start of their relationship was like him appearing, you know, through the burning fire, right? And we know that was an angel. But again, like you see, like that was the first encounter, okay? And their relationship grew from there, okay? to Moses actually experiencing the, the, the presence of the Lord that his face was glowing and the children of Israel had to cover his face because it was just the glory of the Lord was shining too much. Do you want to experience that level of spiritual maturity? And when the Lord first appeared to Moses, the threshing had not even started. As it got harder, that's when the Lord started to reveal himself. As he got added out for Moses, that's when the Lord started to reveal himself. The harder he got, the more the Lord revealed himself. The, the, more, the, the, intense, the more intense the suffering was, the more that the Lord began to reveal himself. Because God wants someone that is selfless. God wants someone that is able to express love like he does. Someone that's able to, that, that exudes a character and personality like him. Holiness and righteousness. It's a process. It is a process. And we'll get there. 
Okay? It is a process. Right. I can think about Elijah that fasted 40 days and 40 nights, not eating anything. I can think about Ezekiel, the Lord told to go naked in the, to the gates of the, of the people of Israel or the gates of the, of, of the land of Israel, whatever, people of Israel. Let's just be as that. If it was you, would you do it? Because it was God's will. There are levels to this. There are levels to this. But again, God's revelation of himself to you is very personal. It's personal to you and your, the fabric of you and your relationship with him, your growth in, 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 in your relationship with him, okay? It takes sincerity. There's something that I've noticed about God and his relationship with Moses is that the Lord loves sincerity. Like, he loves it. He loves when you're sincere with him. And, you know, like, treating him like, friend the lord loves sincerity and I, there's some times when like i'm literally suffering that i wish that i could express myself even more to the lord because that's when you literally get even more intimate and close to the lord it's through your sufferings yeah that's what we've been talking about before yeah so yeah just i just encourage somebody out there like this isn't as hard even for me and i'm here to encourage you that you use it wisely your pain, your pain is an opportunity for you to get closer to the Lord. Don't focus on the outcome alone. When it comes, it's going to come and everything is going to align and it's going to be great. But really, like, try to use this moment. Like, enjoy everything, the good, the bad and the ugly. Like, literally, like, embrace everything. And I hope that this Bible study that we're doing is literally able to open your eyes to seeing the glory of the Lord in whatever situation that you might be going through. Because of the Bible says that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. It doesn't work together for, for those that hate the Lord. In fact, it's working, it's working against them. Like, the more, they, the more they do evil, the more, you can imagine, like, the more doors are open. But well, if you do something, like, if you go and kill someone and they told you they're going to give you money, right? Like, you will, door of cash flow is open to you, okay? And if you go and sleep with your, what, someone that said that's going to give you a job, you get the job. You got, you, that's a door that's open for you. But what type of door is, is that? <laughs> you know, some, there's some people that are working in the same office, but they are not really in the same space they are, they are not like they, <laughs> they are not experiencing the same thing same people have to sleep with their bosses every two weeks just to keep that job but you you got the job it was hard you studied you did everything you got the job even though they are bullying you because of what they have to go through because of the, you know because of what they have to go through you know imagine someone have to sleep with the boss every every two weeks and um you know just a lot of politics people talking about them but nobody really knows but people that know know in the office you know having to deal with the shame the embarrassment but you have to keep it all together because of your you're a tough gay you know because you're you are you know um they say they call them you know bad you know you know what i mean like so yeah that's why they bully you because like what, what, what is so special about this girl comes into this office that is her dream job and like you know what I mean just example yeah so <laughs> just just giving you an example all right keep your head up high um so yeah and we continue right and it says so now it was verse 8 so now it was not you that sent me thither but god and he has made me a father to pharaoh and lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of egypt he said haste ye and go up to my father and say unto him thus saith thy son joseph god has made me lord of all egypt come down unto me tarry not so he tells his brother that can okay, go and bring my father unto the land of Egypt, and thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, and thy heads, and all that thou hast. And there will I nourish thee, for there 
For yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. And we'll stop that as verse 11. So you can obviously see that this arrangement was not supposed to be for like eternity. They were not supposed to like literally stay there, stay there. They were supposed to just survive for that five years and then like pretty much just figure out what they wanted to do. And it says, and behold, your eyes see and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. And ye shall tell my father and of all my glory in Egypt and of all that ye have seen. And ye shall haste and bring down my father thither. And it's like my glory, but we know that it's the glory of the Lord. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Everything that we have is all to the Lord. Nothing. We don't own anything everything is for the glory of the lord every single thing everything and it says and he fell upon his brother benjamin's neck and wept and benjamin wept upon his neck moreover he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them and after that his brethren talked with him and the fame thereof was heard in pharaoh's house saying joseph brethren are come and he pleased pharaoh well and his servant okay um let me see if this is too quite long actually no so we're just gonna try to get through it and maybe like i want to actually like go through it like very like detailed detailed so i'm thinking that we should stop here and then we should extend it for a part two tomorrow um because this is a very it's a very interesting encounter that joseph is about to have with his brother you know when he encountered benjamin it was when he was still having his mask on now he has his mask off like this is a big moment for jacob like it's it's emotional like it's painful it's just like a happy joyful moment as well and it's just full of like so much like yeah emotions you know and we will try to debunk those emotions to try to bring out the truth of the word um f the truth from the word and um yeah i just hope that this is able to encourage you this is like a breakthrough moment for joseph um and um we are going to be experiencing it you know joseph who like his father um that was loved by his father the one that was able to express love to his brothers that hated him um the one that was able to express love even to his father having to go through all of those bad experiences for so like and he didn't do anything he didn't do anything just he only went through those experiences because god chose him and god saw him and god literally put him on that narrow path you know and he was going through trials and tribulation right and um yeah and now like it's just it seemed for a moment there it seemed like i said like all joseph could uh, all joseph's life story was just like people basically coming in his life like that same friction i talked about and um, coming in his life and just like trying to sabotage him um but the funny thing about the life of joseph too i'm just gonna add is that every time that his enemies did try to get in his way every time his enemies like they brushed with him and they you know did what they did you know <laughs> to the glory of the lord they put him strategically where the lord wanted him to be every time twice it happened like they the enemy taught it out for evil but god turned it around for his good okay um so every time and it's in that sense like we can say that joseph's enemies were actually his slaves joseph's enemies were actually his helpers okay they were the ones that were fashioned you know sometimes like you want to get that body but you, you is he are you telling me that it's only 10 it's 10 pounds when um, dumbbell that's gonna get you that body no you need to lift you know heavy you need to you know focus <laughs> i'm not trying to give you fitness training strategies here but i'm just saying that you know you need to do something that's really gonna challenge you and sometimes your friends will not challenge you sometimes your enemies that's really gonna give you that opposing you know what i mean like that will literally like get you to where you need to be and so we need to just appreciate those things and think about them positively and um yeah i was just talking about how you know just joseph's like his joseph his life story just seemed like i said it was very you know negative like i was going on with this guy yes we see that the lord is helping him and everything but man like he was a slave now he's in the prison like his environment did not look like a if god was literally working in his life you know many of you maybe it's your environment that's just like very toxic right now and you're like god i just want to get out of the situation but the question is do you want to get out of the will of the lord for your for your life do you want to do that okay and if you don't want to do that appreciate the lord in every single thing the good and the bad because now we see in the life of joseph 
that there is a turning around, that there is a breakthrough. And this is a moment to literally shout about because God is good. God is good. God turned everything around for good, for the good of Joseph. Okay, now it's the pivotal moment and everything is coming together. And um, this is going to be our breakthrough to a breakthrough moment. Whatever you're facing, know that there is a time. There is a time when the lights will shine. There will be glory hour for God's children. The Bible talks about it. It said it's going to take the righteous through the fire. And it's going to take them through what the water where they're going to cool down. Then it's going to bring them over to a wealthy place. You see, the Lord is bringing us to a wealthy place in the season. We have to keep hoping. We have to be encouraged in the season. We have to be, be on fire. Okay, burn and suffer that. Suffer it. Suffer it. Suffer and you know, have that community around you. Suffer and have the community around you that will encourage you, ground you. Okay? And make sure you're close to the Lord in the season. Like the enemy is not playing and he wants to literally cause about friction, you know, um, yeah, try to take from people and everything. But again, remember, again, we stand in prayer. We stand in prayer. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Whatever the Lord has not fashioned shall never prosper. You understand? Do you get, do you get to me? <laughs> so, guys, yeah, like that's basically that, you know, like, mm -hmm. So we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word today, oh God. I've already just glorified your name, oh God, for you are everlasting. You're an everlasting God, Prince of Peace. We just, we glorify your name, oh God. Thank you, Father, for this Bible study. Thank you, Father, for your word that inspired us, oh God, to continue to hold on and to be encouraged despite the attacks of the enemy and we know that all things work together for her good and we are just we're encouraging the season and father i just pray lord that you give us the strength oh god to be able to stand in this fire i pray you give us the discernment oh god to know the your will for our lives your will in our communication your will in our interactions with people your will in in doing your your what you've asked us to do oh god for our lord let your name be highly exalted oh lord in jesus name and i pray lord that you will protect us from the wiles of the enemy because the enemy knows and is trying to to try to make us fall try to make us stumble but lord we know we stand firm in you oh god we are planted in you in the name of the lord jesus we are planted in you for no weapon formed against us shall prosper we refuse the broad way we we cling on to the narrow way we cling on to the way of the lord we cling on to the commandment of the lord Lord, and we say yes to you, Father. Father, we honor your name, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We rebuke every recruitment of the enemy. We rebuke them, we reject them now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your truth will always abound in our lives, in our heart. Your truth will be spoken in our mouths, O God, in Jesus' name. Father, we honor your name, O Lord, in our minds will have your truth be, be thought about in Jesus' name. About we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I pray, Father, Lord, that as we come here tomorrow, I pray that you will just give us the grace to receive your word in Jesus' name. In Jesus name and you prepare our spirits to receive your word. Abba Father, we glorify your name, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for watching today's Bible study. This is part one. We're going to do part two. Um, for some people, like maybe like you, your breakthrough moment is actually coming because this time that this Bible, the, um, nothing in this ministry is like, is ever just happening. Okay. Nothing in this ministry is ever just happening. So maybe like your breakthrough moment is like a fast approaching and if that's the case so you basically experience the congratulations i'll tell you another congratulations tomorrow for those ones because we've not done we've not finished it um so yeah congratulations in advance like congratulations celebration dun, 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 dun. <laughs> congratulations in advance i congratulate you for um fighting and for overcoming and for being the hero that you are through the help of the lord thank you Abba. jesus name i just lastly just want to pray over the minds of your people over my mind oh lord in jesus name that the enemy will not try to manipulate us uh, manipulate our minds or try to just do evil 
against our minds, oh Lord. I just pray for your protection, oh God, in the blood of Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, for I protect our minds, oh Lord, in Jesus' name, oh God, and give us the grace of God to ruminate and, and think and meditate on your word, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. About we glorify your name, oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Alright, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Ah, bye.